we have added the basic configurations that are required for web api project now we need to focus on the very important concept of web api project and we need to deal with the controller classes let's add the new controller class in web api project before adding a new controller class in this application here are some important points the controller class in web api has a controller suffix so suppose you want to add a new controller with the name employee then the name of this controller will be employee controller you need to use the controller keyword as a suffix for the name of this controller this controller class must be inherited from this controller base class if you are coming from the asp.net core mvc background then over there we were having the controller class remember here we have the controller base class what is the difference the controller class that we use as a base in mvc that has support for views view bag view data etc but here in web api we do not need those concepts so we simply skip the controller and we use the controller base class this controller base class also serve as a base class for the controller class if you are using the controller class in mvc you are automatically using the controller base class but here in web api we do not need to use the controller class we simply need to use the controller base class if this is making any kind of confusion then do not worry we will use this class in just a bit once you have inherited your class from the controller base class you need to use the api controller attribute and then add some attribute routing to access the resource from the url let's see why we use this controller base class this controller base class provides many methods and properties to deal with the http request for example let's say when we add a new resource by using a web api then we need to return the 201 status code and for that we need a method similarly if we want to return the 200 status code then again we need to use another method and this controller base class has all those methods let's see what is the use of this api controller attribute this api controller attribute provides some support for the attribute routing if there is some error in the client data that is 400 then this attribute that is api controller will handle everything automatically multi part form data request this is a header that we use in the http request and this api controller also provides support for this multi part form data we generally send some data in http request in form of url body header etc this api controller also provides support for mapping those resource to the parameters that we generally use in the controller class let's add the controller in our application to add a new controller in this application first we need to create a new folder at the root level so i can simply right click on the name of this application go to add and click on this new here we can type controllers let's say now i want to add a test controller so first i can right click on this controllers folder go to add and simply choose a class and here let's give it a name and remember we need to suffix controller in this name so let's do that click on the add button now so we have added a very simple c sharp class now we need to inherit this class from controller base save the changes let's resolve the namespace it is available in this microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc now we need to use the api controller attribute that's it in any controller class we can have multiple methods let's add a very simple method in this class we have added a new controller in this application we have inherited this controller class from controller base class we have also added the attribute but if you remember that we always talk about the resource in web api and as of now this is the resource that we are looking for this is our resource so we need to map a url to this particular resource let's see how can we do that we can use the routing by using the route attribute we will learn the concept of routing in upcoming videos but here because this is a required so we have to use this attribute and at this place we can simply type test save the changes and let's run this application by pressing control f5 so at this level because we do not have any kind of resource that is why we are having this 404 page but if i type test after this url then you can see we are having this output message hello from get 
what if I want to add one more resource in this controller class? Let's copy this method, paste it again. Let's add get one. Here also we can update the output, save the changes again. And this time you can see that we are having some error message. Although the message is not visible to us properly. Why? Because we have not added the developer exception page in this application. We can do that easily by adding some more middlewares. To add the middleware, we need to go to the startup class. And over here we can add if the environment is development. use developer exception page build this application again go back to the browser refresh this page this time you can see that we are having a proper developer exception page here is the reason of this exception we have some ambiguity in the url the request matches multiple endpoints at this point the application got confused because we are accessing two methods by using the same url here we need to provide a unique url to each resource let's do that here we can make some changes in the routing. Let's run this application again. Simply type test. This time you will see that at this URL we have 404 page because this time along with this test we need to pass the name of our method. So suppose if I'm typing get then you can see we are having the output from hello from get and if I type get one press enter button you can see we are having the output from get one so this is how we can add the first controller in web api we can add multiple resource or we can say methods or we can say action methods in the controller class and we can call these action methods from our url